All right. Hello, everyone. Got to start at a couple minutes early just to let folks trickle in and make sure you know you're in the right spot. Uh, it has been daylight savings in the States, so some of us might be an hour behind still getting used to that. Um, we'll get started in just a few moments. Um, as always, check out the chat in YouTube. That's going to be the best way to ask questions. Uh, and I'll keep repeating this, but I will follow up with a video after this answering every single question uh, that you might happen to have. So please use that chat to ask questions, and there'll be some other ways to interact during this um, that the chat will help with. This entire thing is recorded, though, so you can watch this and all the other live trainings I do on my YouTube channel. And I really need some hold music or something for this. <clears throat> um, there are also some surprise guests in the studio, so if you hear some off-screen laughing, that would be my parents who decided to uh, drop in. Um, so they're just... Over that way a little. All right. Going to give it another 20 seconds or so before we get started. I know I'm excited. All right. I'm ready on this end. Um, so here we go. This is a live Confluence Basics training. Uh, we're going to focus mainly on things that your average everyday user of Confluence would need to know. So this isn't going to dig into things about like space admins or Confluence admins. We might briefly touch on some of those topics, but I will encourage you to put your questions about those topics in the chat. Again, I will follow up with answers to as many possible questions. Uh, live, if possible, we have 15 minutes at the end here for a Q&A or in a follow-up video where I'll dig through absolutely everything and get answers for folks. There might also be other people in the chat who can help me out and help answer questions if I don't know what they are. Um, so please feel free to jump in if you think you have an answer. Um, I can always help out, uh, but I'd appreciate it. So I'm going to transfer over to some slides. We won't spend too long uh, with Death by PowerPoint. But I do want to ground us in some concepts and ideas about Confluence and also kind of reintroduce myself for folks who've maybe just joined. And that is not the right thing. There we go. There are the slides. We'll get to live Confluence in about 10 minutes. Um, but first, who am I? My name's Robert Heen. Uh, I've had a career in IT, mostly on the HR tech side. Uh, so think systems similar to Workday or Greenhouse for Recruiting. Um, but I've had a wide range of roles in information technology from IT help desk technician to project manager to consultant to system manager. Uh, I began using Confluence eight or nine years ago uh, when I moved to the Bay Area. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that story as we go. Um, but I certainly didn't have access to any kind of training or information. Um, I also have a lot of online learning videos and I'll share some of that way at the end. Um, but I have over 13,000 students who have taken various courses on topics ranging from knowledge bases to project management to JQL or how to use advanced search in JIRA. My contact information uh, blog and YouTube are at the bottom. So if you have a question, pop me an email, robert at heen.tech. Check out my blog, which I post, try to post to weekly about Confluence or systems related topics. And then my YouTube channel will have this as a recorded session, as well as follow up Q&A, as well as other videos about project management and Confluence. So for those of you who just joined us, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, this is again recorded, but please drop questions in the chat. So use the YouTube chat to interact and I'll quickly just drop a message. Uh, please ask your questions. Don't wait for me to pause. Please don't wait for the end of everything to ask your question. I'll do my best to respond either in real time or again in a follow-up. Uh, and there will be some other opportunities for interactivity that will use the chat. So interaction. Unfortunately, with YouTube, it's kind of a one-way thing. Uh, I can't bring people on screen easily and have them ask questions or work with me. Um, so I'll need your help. As we talk about different topics, I'll ask you to rate your understanding or comfort with the topic from a one to five. Five, you're super comfortable with it. One, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah, so feel free to just mash a one through a five, and that'll help me tailor what I talk about. I can spend more, a little bit more time on topics folks aren't as comfortable with. Uh, but if you are comfortable with them, no worries. And I have had a lot of folks in prior sessions who describe themselves as newbies or brand new to Confluence. That is completely okay. That is what this course is for. Um, I briefly mentioned I started using Confluence eight years ago. I started using it when I showed up to a job and they just said, that's the wiki, go use it. 
there was no training. There was no information. There was no guidance. It was just, here's how to log in. And the person literally walked away from my desk. Um, so I learned it by bashing my head into the keyboard repeatedly and eventually figured it out. Uh, I hope to save everyone on this call and every other training, a lot of that frustration, because when we know how to use the system, it's much easier and we can actually get stuff done instead of fighting with a piece of technology. A quick agenda. Um, I'll do my best to cover all of these concepts and topics. Unfortunately, I only have 45 minutes, which this doesn't seem like much, but I could, and I will actually have courses on many of these topics. At the end of March, I have one explicitly for templates. So I'll talk about them in this lecture or in this uh, chat, but I can't get it as in-depth to all of this as I would like. So again, ask those questions in the chat, but we're gonna dig through some concepts here at the start. And this is just to ground us all in some foundational concepts and ideas that will help the rest of Confluence make a lot of sense. For example, if you don't know how access works, it can be insanely frustrating to try and use Confluence or any other system. So we'll cover some of these basics so we all have that common understanding. And again, as we go, I'll ask you for a one to five in the chat just to help me target and understand where maybe I should spend some more time. We will spend about 10 minutes on these concepts and then we'll get to hands-on. I'll jump into Confluence and show you these things. And then we will have dedicated time at the end for Q&A or to dig into other things. So first, uh, just in the chat, drop a one to a five with your comfort level in knowing what Confluence is. Again, when I started, I was just told it's the knowledge base and that was it. Uh, but Confluence can be everything from a very uh, controlled knowledge base that only a few people can edit, but everyone can access to a wide open collaboration platform that everyone can go in. It's essentially just a virtual space to share information. I tend to think of it like a library that helps me understand some other concepts I'll talk about, but it's somewhere our teams can go to share information, build documentation, work together and serve as a source of truth for something. Some groups use this only for internal communication or information. For example, a human resources team might use it for policies or onboarding. Other groups use it for project information. An engineering team may have a space for each project they work on and everything about the product is there. You can also make it customer facing. So some teams use it as a customer facing knowledge base. I'll talk a little bit about that in uh, when we talk about access. And I'm seeing a one in the four in the chat. Uh, Ada, I hope I'm saying that properly, but no worries at all. Again, this is intended for raw beginners. And Lori, a four, fairly confident. I hope we can build that up a little bit, maybe get you to a five. So spaces. Um, again, real quick, drop in the chat a one to a five, however comfortable you are with the concept of a space in Confluence. I tend to think of a space as like an area of a library. You have a library that might have a nonfiction section and you know all the information about nonfiction goes in there. You might have an area for just magazines or kids books. Spaces are a similar idea in Confluence. It's just a way to organize Confluence by type of information. Very commonly, each team might get their own space. Recruiting might have one, engineering might have one, etc. You might also have a separate space for each project. Now, spaces give us some ability to control things like access and some other features, but there are situations where you don't want folks to necessarily see certain content, so you could put it in a controlled space. So maybe the whole company shouldn't know about a secret project. You just have a space that only the people working on it can see it. Many companies also give each individual their own space. This is called a personal space, and I'll show you one when we get into Confluence, but that's a great place to keep your own stuff, just so you don't worry about cluttering up or getting in anyone's way. Now, Dolores, I see you have a one with a space. Uh, again, it's just a way to organize the information in there. There are two main types of information or resource you'll find in Confluence. That's a page or a blog. So real quick, again, a one to five with your comfort. Um, they're very similar. They both offer a lot of great editing abilities. They have macros. They all exist in one and only one space, and they can be restricted. So I might have a space everyone can see, but only Rob can edit a certain page, or maybe only Dolores can see a certain page. A big difference appears though, because pages appear in the content tree or the page tree, and I'll show you this live, but they can also use templates. Pages tend to be perennial information, it won't change, so a policy or something like that. Whereas blogs don't show up in the page tree, they have their own space and confluence they exist, and they're displayed chronologically. Best for point in time information. 
I use it for weekly product updates. My team knows, go to the engineering space, go to the blogs, and you'll see every Friday, Rob has put in an update about what happened. And I'm seeing a three and a one for pages versus blog. I didn't know blogs existed for a number of years, and I finally figured out what they were for, and now I happily use them. So you can use Confluence just with pages, but blogs also offer you that ability to use just point in time information that won't change. Access is a very confusing topic that can frustrates a lot of folks. So real quick, one to five in that chat. Um, and again, for folks who just dropped in, this is recorded. I will be following up on as many questions as I can live and then recording the rest of them. Um, access in Confluence is layered though. The, the biggest layer is an instance which is basically your company's copy of Confluence. And every instance is separate from every other instance. So if I have access to Atlassian's instance, I can't also see Google's copy of Confluence. And I'm making up that example. I don't know if Google uses Confluence or not. So you have to have access to the instance. So generally, if you work at a company, you'll be provisioned with a license to access Confluence. Now you can have guest or anonymous access. And this ties back to using Confluence as a public facing knowledge base or help center. This can be risky because it's possible that some sensitive information gets accidentally exposed. So companies that choose to do this typically have that in a separate space and it's very tightly controlled. Only certain people can edit it because they understand the implication of accidentally publishing something that shouldn't be live to the whole world. Now within Confluence, you can also control access to a space. If I'm not on the engineering team, I might not even see that space. I don't know it exists. If someone sends me a link to it, I can't open it. So that's another way to think about access. And that is a very big source of frustration. I get a link from a coworker, I can't open it. I don't know what to do. When that happens, typically someone called a space administrator, I won't dig too much into that role, can help out, but they are responsible for controlling access to a space, who can view it, who can add comments, who can change access. Typically someone in IT can also help out. IT tends to own Confluence at a company so they can help you figure out what's going on or who to talk to to get help. And then under the space level, pages can be restricted. So I might have access to the engineering space, but maybe I can't see a certain page about a project. Or maybe I can see a page about a project, but I'm not allowed to edit it. Again, access is incredibly frustrating for many folks. I'll have a follow-up training that just digs into access and that kind of thing, as well as one just for space admins coming up. But at a high level, to contact either IT or your space admin if you're frustrated or can't figure out what to do. I think there's only two more slides. I promise I'll get to live confluence real quick. Um, but templates are another concept that I was unaware of for way too long. When we first create a page, Confluence will let us pick a template, which is a pre-formatted page with a bunch of blank spaces to fill in. These are unique to the space they live in. So every space could have different templates. My HR team might have a policy template while engineering has a sprint retrospective template. Um, and they can be created or edited by those space admins. And I forgot to ask, but drop a one to five, however comfortable you are with templates. They speed up both content creation and people using the content because they know what to expect. I have one for meeting notes. So I click one button. It throws a bunch of columns in there, a bunch of macros, things that I use all the time. And then I can get to creating. I don't have to fight with the editor to add a column or something like that. I think this is our last slide. Um, but collaboration, again, Confluence is that virtual workspace that's intended to be a source of truth. So it's not very useful if we can't work together in it. Um, so drop that one to five in the comments, how comfortable you are. But every page in Confluence, assuming you have the ability to add comments in the space, that's a permission, allows you to add comments. Dolores, I see you said a one, no worries, I'll show you how to do some of this. We can add comments on an entire page. Hey, is this still accurate? I can add comments on a certain paragraph. I can add comments on a single word or sentence. I use this a lot when I find information that seems out of date. I might ask someone, hey, Sally, I don't think this is accurate. Can you please update it? They'll get a notification and they can go in and change it. You can also collaboratively edit pages. So you could go in and share an edit link with someone and up to 10 people can jump in all at the same time and edit that page together. So I could work with my coworker in Australia and in real time edit the page at the same time. And we can also, of course, share content, sharing a link, or just there's a big button that says share that'll show you that we can click. Whew, okay. 
Enough of the boring slides, we're going to pop over to Confluence and get a bit hands-on. Again, please don't wait for the Q&A at the end to ask your questions. Drop them in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them. I've zoomed in a bit on this screen so it might look a bit bigger than you're used to. Um, and this is a generic version of what is called Confluence Cloud. So this version of Confluence is managed by Atlassian, the company that makes Confluence. And if you look up in my URL, it says creatorsdemo1.atlassian.net. So that .atlassian.net tells me I'm in the cloud. I'm not using something called Data Center, which is the other version of Confluence that exists. And there was another version called Server that has gone through end of life. Most companies are going to be using Confluence Cloud, but some bigger companies or companies that have specific requirements might be using Data Center. For the purpose of this training, it's all going to be the same. So it doesn't matter too much if you're on DC, Data Center, or Cloud. This is my home screen, and I can always get to this by clicking on the Confluence logo up here or that big button that says Home. So if I ever get lost, which to me happens a lot because I go through Confluence quite a bit, if I just click the Confluence logo, it takes me right back here. Now this page is pretty useful. It's gonna show me pages I've been on recently. So if I'm working on something and I forget where I was or I saw something useful, I can find it. It's also gonna have some spaces that I've been in recently. So I mentioned personal spaces. My personal space is just my name. And this might be somewhere I go to add my own meeting notes or my own information that I don't necessarily want others to have or see. But I can also star spaces to keep them here and you'll notice it pops up, or unstar it to knock it back down. Along the top, I've got some menu items that are pretty useful. Again, home brings me home, but the recent menu will bring me back to pages I've been on recently. I am really, really bad at creating a page and not publishing it, so I just have a bunch of drafts floating around. So this last tab is very, very useful. It just reminds me of all the drafts I have floating around out there, but I also have pages that I've worked on, something I've edited, things I've created, if it loads, <laughs> and then my starred pages. These are unique to the individual user, so I always encourage teams to come in here and for individuals to start content that's useful. Um, Ada, uh, quite more a comment about completing a sp sprint about creating a Confluence page. Um, there are a lot of tight connections and integrations between Jira and Confluence. They're both made by Atlassian, so they work very well together. And they're adding more and more touch points when you take a certain action in one system to prompt you to do something in another. So many teams, especially ones I've been on, will use Confluence to record our retrospective notes or our sprint reviews and then connect them to Jira tickets. So don't, don't be uh, too surprised if you see a lot of Jira popping up inside Confluence or the other way. Um, I personally don't use this homepage too much, uh, but this bar at the top will always be there. Um, so I'll just quickly go through that. We'll see spaces. And I have a special permission to create a space. Not everyone will see this. Um, but here I can click to just go straight to a space. I have a list of teams. And these would be created by my Confluence administrator. So not a space admin, but someone who administers all of Confluence. And this might be all of engineering or one specific engineering team or just HR to let me share information or do other actions. This is the most basic version of Confluence. Um, I haven't added any apps, but there is an entire marketplace of companies that create add-ons similar to an app store on your phone to extend what Confluence or Jira or other Atlassian products can do. And then we have templates. I won't jump into that right now because when we create a page, you're going to see it, but you can always click on this to see all the templates in your space. And then we have the big blue create button. Um, it's very tempting to push this. I tend not to because it's confusing to some folks where the page ends up. If I push this, it will go to the top level of my page. So it'll drop it in my page tree right here. If I'm looking at a page, it will make it a child of that page. So I'll show you this in just a moment, but I tend to prefer another way to make pages. And if that's by coming down here to the content area and either clicking this plus that says create, or if I know I want it to be a child or live under a parent, I'll click this little create here. So before I get too deep in that, I'm going to just go to my private or my personal space. It's got more stuff in it that I can show everyone. And I see a bunch of folks might have joined. Use that chat to drop your questions. Please don't wait. This is recorded. I will have a follow-up video. And we do have dedicated Q&A time. Q &A time. Uh, so this is just a space. And we'll notice that that toolbar at the top hasn't changed. I still have 
access to everything. I've got home, recent spaces, etc. Oop, I forgot search. Um, finding things in Confluence is one of the biggest pain points I see teams experiencing. Um, I didn't know the search bar existed for a while. So please share with your teams that you can search. It works very well with keywords. Um, and it, it's driven a lot by the title of a page or a blog or words that show up in it. And this is where it's very important to work with your teams that use Confluence to help ensure that they have good titles and that the content they have in there relates to the title. I've been in many environments where someone is called out in front of a team meeting or in an all hands in front of the whole company. Why is Confluence so terrible? And the answer isn't the tool is bad. The answer is generally no one is owning the structure or managing it or making sure folks know how to use it. So in the search, you can just type in keywords. So what do I have in here on Confluence? And it's just going to narrow things down. I can also filter by space. And in bigger environments, there'll be a ton of spaces. So maybe I know it's owned by engineering, or in this case, Robert Heen. I'll just click on that. And that will change my results. There is an advanced search if I click on this bar down here. This gives me some more options to filter. And the biggest call out is archived content. I'll come back to archived content in a moment, but this is how I would find it. If I have a page that has been archived or essentially hidden, this is how I could find it in the future. Going back to my space. One thing you will notice in the space is everything on the side is now different. So up at the top, what I see here depends on my access level and what my space administrator has decided to include. So because I'm a space admin, I have the space settings. I've got a whole training at the end of the month exclusively digging in. Oop, I lied, I don't. That one's on templates. I'm working on an exclusive training on what a space admin does, what this button has. But everything else in here is an optional feature that might be on or off. So if you go into your Confluence and you don't see all of these, chat with your space admin about what could be missing. The biggest call out for this training is this is where blogs live, right up here. So I'm not gonna find my blogs down in my content. That's just pages. In between all of these options and my content are my shortcuts. This is another thing that I didn't understand existed for a while, uh, but this allows me to link out to non-confluence resources. For example, if I have a reporting tool like Tableau, I could include a link here, or I could include commonly used or super useful pages right here on the side. Um, great question, Ada. Again, I hope I'm saying that properly. Why do we need confluence? What's the point of it? Um, for me, the purpose of Confluence is to give me a space to go that serves as a source of truth for information. So what do I need to know about onboarding at my company? It serves as a place for my team to go to collaborate and work on gathering and storing and sharing knowledge or information. It's similar, but not the same as products like SharePoint. You could argue it's similar to something like Google Drive because many teams will just store documents in a folder that they share. But Confluence gives us a structured way to work on all of that, to search through it, and then to extend it, to do other things with it, connect content between itself, or even tie out to other systems like Jira. So that's an awesome question. At the bottom, I've got my content. And again, these are my pages. Pages can live in what's called a page tree. So if you look very closely, there's a little carrot icon or an arrow. And if I click it, it will expand this tree. It will show me what pages exist under this one. We call this one the parent, and anything under it is a child. And a parent can have a child that's also a parent. That's kind of confusing to say. But Confluence Basics has creating a page, which itself has a page. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, to view these pages, I just click on them. And that will load the page. And if I mouse over it, you may have seen briefly just a little description of it. So if I'm not quite sure what it is, I can mouse over it to see. I can star it, which will add it up to my recent starred. And I can also edit it if I have permission. So the pencil will let me edit pages. Now, right away, I can see on this page, there's a comment, which is this yellow text. If I click on it, I'll see what the comment is. And in this case, someone thinks I misspelled something. Um, you can also have comments way at the bottom, and this will put it on the entire page. But you can just select text and hit comment. This does require the uh, access to have the ability to add comments in a space. So if you're missing this, you're going to want to chat with either IT or your space admin. 
Another great, ah, excuse me, another great question. Is it a kind of repository for Jira issues or similar to? You, I have seen teams use Confluence as kind of a task tracking system, but it is by no means a ticketing system. You could use this to manage a project, um, but Jira offers a lot more tools that are better suited for it. The analogy I like to use is if I need to hammer a nail, I could use my shoe. That could work. I could use a rock or I could just get a hammer, the tool that's meant for the job. So if Jira is more the ticketing side of the house, the Confluence is more the knowledge base, uh, the uh, knowledge management. Up at the top of every page, we'll see a no number of icons and they're all fun, different colors. The first one is the ability to edit. So if I'm missing that, that means the page is somehow restricted or I don't have access to edit in the space. This button will show all my comments. The lightning bolt is for automations, which is outside the scope for this training, but something if folks are interested in, I can put something together. I can star it and I can watch it. Watching is another feature I didn't really know about. I can watch any page I can see, and this will give me email updates about it. I do this frequently for important documents like company holidays <laughs> or for projects I want to keep an eye on but don't want to have to go read every few days. This will just give me a nice update. The lock is what controls restrictions, and a restriction is just who can do what on a Confluence page. So if we think of our access, I can log into this Confluence. Oh, thank you, Lori. <laughs> I'll have to go back and remember what that analogy was so I can keep using it. Um, if we think of this, I can log into Confluence so I have access to the instance. I can see the page so I have access to the space. This is telling me I'm the only one who can edit this or view it. I've prevented anyone else. They have no access. So this is the most restrictive, the red lock. I could say, you know what, I want people to see it, everyone can view it, but only I can edit it. This is a common one for things like policies or information that only certain groups should change. Whereas the red lock is something I only use typically if it's incredibly sensitive or if I'm still working on it. Maybe I'm not ready to publish this page, so I don't want it to get out there yet. I'll keep it locked to just me and my team so we can go in and do what we need to do. But this restricting pages can be very frustrating because I might get a link and then I just get an error saying, sorry, you can't read this. If you know a page exists if someone tells you about it and you can't see it, this is probably why. There might be a restriction or you don't have access to the space. Uh, from here, I can click this little link icon and that will copy the link to the page. It's the same as selecting the link up here in the URL bar. I, that's how I tend to share pages. I just copy and paste that into chat or email or something. There's also a share button, and this will email the people or the group that you've selected. So if I want my front end team, the front end wizards, uh, to get this in their inbox, in their email, I might give them a quick message. Hey, front end wizard team, uh, this has useful information about an upcoming event. You should go read it. Now you'll notice it does warn you, some people might not be able to access it. So just a reminder about the restrictions. Oh, I uh, thank you, Lori. I use that analogy a lot. Um, many times a team will have a tool that they are using to solve a problem and it's not the most appropriate tool. Folks are really, really good at making something work, but if you already have access to something else that's intended for that function, in this case, Confluence for managing our knowledge or our notes or our lessons learned, we really should use that because it'll be much easier. We'll get much less frustrated. Okay, now we're gonna make a page. If I wanna make a new page, I can just click create and that will make it under the page I'm currently on. So if I clicked create right now, it would make a new child page under Confluence Basics. That would be exactly the same as clicking this little plus right next to Confluence Basics. So I'm just gonna push create and I have some options. I can make a page, a database, which is a new feature they've released. I've got a YouTube video breaking these down. Um, it's still in beta, so they're still building it out. And then a blog post. But right now I'll make a page. And this is, gives me the page editor. There was a recent UI change or user interface change where the sidebar and the top bar will now remain. That used to disappear. So this looks a little bit different than prior videos if you sat in with me. But you'll notice right away on the right, this templates pane shows up. Uh, and this is where I can insert a template. I can mouse over them just to see what they look like. So I like this one. Maybe I want ITSM change management. That sounds exciting and fancy. So I'll just click it. 
and that will then populate my page with everything on it. Uh, Laura, you can't steal it. Please take it. <laughs> um, I'll still have to give it a name, but you'll notice it's dropped in things like a table of contents and a summary and some icons. Please use templates. Explore the ones that are there. And you can find them again by more actions, templates, and import doc. Um, but I didn't know about these, so I'd have to type out or I would copy and paste. It works, but it's very annoying. I tend to use how-to article a lot. I write a lot of how-tos. So I just click it. And if I think it needs a change, I can talk to my space admin. And again, we're going to talk about templates at the end of the month. So please drop into that if you want to hear more. But this is a great way to break down the barriers that folks have about adding content. Oh, I don't know how to structure it. Well, no worries. We have a template that will do most of that for you. Just go create your content. From here, we'll just add some stuff. I need to give it a name. Um, this will be very, very quick. You'll notice there's some placeholder text. This grayer text, like we see here in step one, won't be published. That's just a prompt for me writing it. So adding content is just like using Microsoft Word, Google, whoops, my camera died, using Microsoft Word, uh, Google Docs, any other of those systems. I can go in and type. The one thing that frustrated me is there's no font size. Instead, I have these headers. Uh, headers are actually pretty useful for breaking up content. You'll see some of them here, how to use Confluence, instructions, and they're really useful for a few reasons. The first is they visually break up my page so it's easier for someone to read. Um, I call it a wall of text when someone just drops in a whole page. It's hard to, to process. So the uh, headers make it easier to go down, but it also ties into some th things called macros that exist. These are like little programs that add function to Confluence. I will demonstrate the table of contents one, but Confluence comes with a good number of them out of the box. And some of the add-ons you can get for Confluence include even more. Now, if you notice in this box though, it's got an instructions and related articles link. So clicking on these when I view the page will take me to that header. So this further speeds up folks using it and makes it easier to find things. The other use for it, I'm going to quickly publish this page or other use for headers, is you can hyperlink directly to the header. So if I have a teammate who doesn't know how to use Confluence, I could send them to this page, but maybe I want to send them straight to the instructions. If I click this little link icon that appears, I can then send them that, and that will take them directly to the header instructions. Another great way to help folks quickly find content so you don't have to kind of fight with it. All right, I'm going to pause very quickly. Please drop questions into the chat. I know folks have them, so please take a moment to just slot them in there, and I'll be happy to tackle them. Once I've created a page, I can edit it if I have the permissions, and that's just my arrow or my pencil in the top right. You can also hit the E key on your keyboard. I haven't yet mastered all the shortcuts on the keyboard. I know some folks who never touch a mouse. It's amazing. It's some kind of superpower. Editing brings me right back to here. So if I need to, I can add content. I can bold or italicize. Things like font colors, etc., are up in the bar. I can add action items. And there was a question earlier on, can we use this to track things like Jira? Yes. If I add an action item, it's going to add it to Confluence's little checkbox. And then if I hit enter, I can add another one. So I can make, it's more like a to-do list in my mind. It's not quite the same as a Jira ticket because I can't add a lot of information, but I can assign it to someone. So I might say, hey, at Robert, and that's one way to collaborate. I can at mention people, and then I can even add a date. I'm going to do two forward slashes, and that's going to add a date. Now I'm going a bit beyond the bare bones basics here, but there's a macro that will pull in all of the action items in an area and give you a list of things that need to be done and then who needs to do them. And let's see if I can remember the name of the thing. Ah, task report. I'm quickly gonna set this up and please let me know if you would like to see more of exactly how to do this. Oh, I'm doing it live. I can't see instructions like yours. Um, Ada, I'm glad you're doing it live. I forgot to mention I encourage folks if they can to follow along. If you have Confluence at your workplace, jump on in, 
don't edit or delete anything that looks important. <laughs> Maybe, you know, ask your admin for a safe place to tinker around. Or you can even get a free instance, a free copy of Confluence to play with on your own. I've got a YouTube video explaining that. But getting hands-on is the best way to learn. Um, I'm going to back up, Ada, just so you can follow along. And if other folks, you know, want me to speed up or slow down, whoops, didn't mean to do that, uh, pop in the chat. And it looks like my screen froze. There we go. So to add the action item, just up in the top, there's this little action items icon. I'll just click that. And then I'll just type in whatever the to-do is. After I do that, I can at mention, so shift two, and just pick someone to assign them that thing. And I tend to pick on myself in these examples. And then I can add a date, and that's the forward slash on my keyboard. So it's the question mark on my keyboard without the shift. And then I'll click on that, and then I can just pick my date. So that's going to add that as an item on here. Oh, Andy, coming to the rescue. Thank you. <laughs> um, I mentioned there'd be other experts in the channel. Um, I will point out, there's a ton to learn about Confluence. I don't think any one person knows it all. I rely a lot on others to help me learn, and I'll talk about some other resources everyone on this call can jump into in the next few minutes to keep learning. Um, but to their point, if I do a forward slash, the first thing is the action item. So that's the macro called action item. I'll just hit enter to select it. And it's the same as clicking the button at the top. Now, if I want to see the report or a list of all of them, I'll do that same forward slash, or I can click on this plus here, insert elements. And it's right up here. That will give me the same list. So either the forward slash or this plus. And then I can search through it. There are a ton of different, these are called macros. I'll encourage everyone to look through this list just to see what tools are in your toolkit. Again, I have a toolkit at home. I know the hammer and the screwdriver. I should really know what that weird wrench is for. Take time to explore these. And it just fell out of my head what it's called. Oh, <laughs> uh, Ada, it's possible there's a license challenge or other thing. Um, check out how to get a free instance you can get spun up and have something very similar to what you're seeing here. Nothing in this particular instance that I've shown you with the exception of access is outside the free one. So if you have the free version, you can't restrict pages, but you'll have all the macros, you can make pages and blogs, and you can have up to 10 other people, I think it's 10, jump in with you. Um, before I jump to other resources and just open the floor, I do wanna show blogs and again, that lives at the top of the space. And you'll notice right away after I click it, it looks different. Blogs are arranged chronologically. Again, they're intended for point in time. Something happened on December 7th in 2023. There it is. And then nothing happened until January 28th. Um, I tend to use these for regular updates. Again, every Friday, I send out what happened this week. You could also use it for how did my week go. Think your own personal performance log of what happened but they're a great way to share information uh, and a great way for other folks to come in and see what's happened over time. Whew. All right, very quickly, I'm gonna talk about other resources, other places you can go to get information. Uh, again, we're barely scratching the surface with our basics here. I've shown you a couple of things that are very useful, but there's a lot that I just can't get to in 45 minutes because there's so much about this tool that we need to learn. Um, Atlassian has a great free community. You can sign up at community.atlassian.com. It's full of people all over the world who use it. It's full of Atlassian employees who know the product. And there's a, just tons of great stuff. Um, so go check that out. Sign up, free account, great place to find things, including things like free certification trainings, other things. If you have Confluence, um, like Ada, go explore it. See where the limits are. Maybe if you push a button that says you don't have the license, you know, write that down and ask some questions. Um, but getting hands-on is the best way to learn. Figuring out what you don't know lets you then go learn that thing. I do have a lot of stuff on YouTube. I put stuff on LinkedIn. I have a blog explaining a lot of these concepts and ideas. This training is recorded. It will be added to the other live trainings I've done. 
I have Q&A follow-ups to this, and I have other videos explaining different things about Confluence you can go check out. And then talk to other people. I've learned a lot by talking to other Confluence users. I've made some great friends talking to them <clears throat> that I still work with and communicate with even after I don't work together. In the bottom left is my specific contact information. Again, email, blog, YouTube. Please check those out. And then the QR code in the top right goes to Udemy courses I have. Again, I have 13,000 students in different topics. One of those is about knowledge-based fundamentals. It's more covering the concepts and ideas around how to build a successful knowledge base. I use Confluence as the example, but how do you generate buy-in? How do you figure out what to call things? How do you figure out your structure? So please check that out. They all have a special discount for this group. Whew. Okay, I'm done with the kind of pre-recorded in my head spiel. I'm going to go through the chat real quick and see what uh, questions I may have missed, but please drop your questions in there. Otherwise, I'm going to just kind of spin the wheel in my head and pick something to talk about, and we'll see where we go. Completing a sprint. All right, I'm going to start with how can Jira and Confluence kind of work together. Um, so I'm going to pop back over to Confluence quickly. And I've mentioned Atlassian a couple times. I may not have explained what they are. Um, I don't work for Atlassian. I get to work with their products and some of the folks there. Um, but Atlassian is the company that makes Confluence. They also make a whole host of other systems. The Rubik's Cube, or this icon in the top left that I call the Rubik's Cube, will show you other Atlassian things that happen to exist in your instance. So this is a lot of them. Many companies I work at don't have this many, but we can see there's three versions of Jira. There's something called Compass, Product Discovery, Analytics. And because Atlassian makes all these things, they all integrate very well together. So Jira and Confluence are usually spoken about in a similar way. Again, in that one, Jira handles my tasks and tracking work, and the other, Confluence, tracks my knowledge and information. And because of that, my teams tend to use them at the same time. I might use Jira to build out a new website, but I'll use Confluence to record any decisions about what we're doing on that website. I might use it to record my sprint retrospectives, the time my team sits down to learn. So very quickly on this page, I'm just going to call it Jira example. I'm going to go back to my macros or my elements. And I'm just going to use search to find Jira and see what I have. This is just looking for the name of it. And your environment may have more or less depending on what you should only have more. This is, again, the basics. Um, but I have things like insert Jira issues. I can create a Jira issue from inside Confluence. I can add charts. I can have a calendar. For this quick demonstration, though, I'm just going to click the first one, Jira issues. And this will look very similar to the search in Jira to find tickets or issues. Now, if you're not familiar with Jira and you want to tinker around with this, chat around at your company or, you know, do some quick research to see it. But you can just start looking for things that exist. I'll see if I can find one quickly. So I just typed in Jira. And this is showing me a list of all the tickets that meet that criteria. Maybe I want to filter it by the Jira project, which is similar to a Confluence space. Maybe I only want a certain type of ticket, only bugs. But I can then insert that directly onto this Confluence page. And now I have an interactive page I can show folks. So after I publish this, I might direct my team here for a list of all the tickets that are open. Or I might have this show all my, my stakeholders all of the epics, all of the project work we've completed in the past month. And then they can just click on it. And that's going to open up that ticket in Jira. So we're going into Jira, again, a separate system. <clears throat> but once this loads, I'll show you on the Jira ticket how we can go right back to Confluence. Because they're so tightly inter integrated, it makes it very easy to kind of bounce back and forth between these uh, systems. So here's my Jira ticket. If I click this little down arrow, I can link it to a certain Confluence page. So this is going the other way. This is saying, hey, I've got a ticket that exists in Jira, and I want to go connect it to the Jira example page. This allows my team then to quickly go to that page to get information. Maybe I'm writing an HR policy, 
and I have a ticket to go build it. I have to go to refer to the old one. Or maybe I'm an engineer building a complicated piece of software and I have to go to a product requirements document. I can add it right to the ticket so when I click on it, it'll pop it up right on top of the ticket. And this is an awful example because there's only an exclamation point. Um, but here is that Confluence page. It does take <clears throat> a few minutes to set that up, but I found it very useful for sharing information, especially if my teams use both of these Atlassian tools. All right, popping back to my chat quickly. All right, I will talk for another few minutes, but please drop those questions in there. And again, there'll be a follow-up with specific answers for you. I briefly mentioned shortcuts and they exist on the left here. They are unique per space, but they make it very easy to add a resource either from within Confluence or outside it. I found this very useful because sometimes my team doesn't store everything in Confluence. I try to make it my source of truth. So as much information as I can goes into Confluence and I tell my teams if it's not in there, it doesn't exist. That's not always true though. Sometimes we have um, a new onboarding letter we have to share multiple times and there's a template for that. That might be a Google Doc or a Microsoft Doc and I have to have that somewhere else. That's okay. I make it accessible here though by adding it as a shortcut so someone can quickly click on it and go right to that thing. In this case, my blog. This could also go to any other resource you can hyperlink though. So internal documentation, your company intranet, uh, reporting, that kind of thing. This helps solve one of the challenges of Confluence, which is I can't find anything. So finding ways to bring your content closer to your end user or the folks going into it is incredibly helpful and will help build buy-in and adoption because folks won't get as frustrated trying to find it all. Okay, we're about at the 45 minute mark. I'm not seeing any more questions. I wanna thank you all for showing up to this. Um, I always enjoy these. I'll be doing about one of these a month on the basics, and then there will be more targeted content. For example, how to effectively use templates is coming up at the end of this month. I'm planning one out on what is it like being a space administrator? So that level of access above user, how do you administer a space? I'll have one on access and other topics to help folks understand these concepts. Again, if I don't know how to use the tool, I'll get frustrated. To use the hammer analogy, I might smash my thumb with it, and then I don't like hammers. It's not really the hammer's fault though. We need to understand these things so we can use them effectively or decide to use something else. So thank you all again. I'll keep the line open for a few more minutes for any last minute questions. And this recording will be available and thank you all for your time. All right. Well, wherever you are, have a good morning, a good evening or a good afternoon. <laughs> Cheers.